Hi, I'm Kristen, and Aaron's my best friend. Hi, I'm Aaron, and Maeve is my best friend. This is what a drag. Hey, Aaron, did you know that RuPaul's Drag Race isn't the be-all and end-all of all drag? Say what? Oh. We went down to Dickens Pub for the Glock viewing party of All Stars 3 with House of Grease. And then we interviewed Sam Brown and Perla Coddington. Let's check it out. <laughs> We're here with Sam and Perla. Do you want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves? Sure. You go first. Okay. Grease before <laughs> beauty. Wow. Wow. It's okay, we live together. We, we can be mean to each other. She deals with me on a regular basis. How does it feel? Literally stage mom. Am I looking at this one? Better. Or Whichever. like, you look at us. Look at me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Sam Brown, and I am Perla Coddington's manager, as well as the manager of a few other drag queens in Calgary. What else do you want to know about me? She's a Libra. <laughs> Party. <laughs> <laughs> if that could be my email signature, it would be. <laughs> yeah. Party at PerlaCoddington.com. <laughs> Which I own. Yes, I forgot Don't about that. It. We have a website. Perla, who are you? Who am I? <laughs> I'm a man in a wig. No, um, Perla is such a different character from who I am as like a normal person that like it's so great to just have this moment where I can escape and just like create this monster that is Perla and just like embrace it and create my own art form that and I think I've kind of done that with Perla. Like, she's such a different style of queen than what you've seen in Calgary. I like to consider Perla to be, like, my interpretation of, like, female empowerment and how, like, I look at women and creating this, like, elegant fashion beauty that is Perla. Like, she's kind of a mess. She's kind of not but that's also me and just like high concept looks, very focused on fashion. I, I think drag is, is such an amazing art form in the queer community and I think it's such a beautiful thing and I don't necessarily think it has to just stay to the, the LGBT community. I think it's such a beautiful thing for self-expression and like... All the homies. Perla's kinda created this new facet for me and um, I came from theater I did theater for years and then um, just like sparked into drag and I was like, fuck it, let's put a wig on. <laughs> let's do it. Actually, who the fuck gave me the idea of the sharp cheeks? Was it me? No, I don't even know where that concept came from, but I was like, I want really hard lines. Oh yeah, no, that was just you. I want to look real. <laughs> Does not look real at all. Yeah, there was like a period of time where you were like, I want to do drag. I'm like, we can... So we're just gonna do it then, and then it was like again. I just want to do it. And I'm like, okay, so we're gonna do it. And now look at this. Right? Because now I you're at glitter lips. <laughs> <laughs> so zoom in on those glitter lips. Let's get some camera work going on here. Do a zoom for me. We're gonna do this real quick. Come on, yeah, go. Oh. Show me them lips, girl. <laughs> oh, damn that pucker. Thank you. Damn that pucker. <laughs> Hashtag damn that pucker. I'm single. Yeah. So with the popularization of shows like Drag Race, mm -hmm. how have you? seen the drag community affected by it? I think it's grown. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I know this is like kind of a cop-out, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I wouldn't be doing drag if it wasn't for Drag Race. And I don't think that's a cop-out. I don't think that's no, bad at I, all. I had such a misconception of drag and I felt some type of way about it. And I think Drag Race really normalized it for me and allowed me to realize that I I can do this and it is 
so much more than just dressing up and there's so much so many layers to it remember like i come from like a very conservative family and they viewed it as like you wanted to transition or like you want to be a woman and so that was kind of my first impression of drag and as i got older and started to really learn about drag culture and learn about the history of drag and uh, like the people who have fought for gay rights, so many drag queens, people of color, trans women were involved in that and it just inspired me so much more. And I was like, fuck yeah, I wanna do drag, not because it's, I, not because A, B, C, like I wanna do it because this is such a beautiful art form, this is so important to the queer community and this is such a beautiful way to represent women in your own way and create this beautiful feminine entity that doesn't necessarily have to be the embodiment of femininity, but it's, it's your version of that empowerment, which I really like. That's so cool. Honey, you look so good up there. <laughs> yeah, you drop it low to that song. Is that what your mom said when she came out? Oh my God, my mother had a great time. She brought fucking foam fingers. And I was like, you stupid. Really? Thing. Oh yeah. And then um, my sister has like come every single time after, and um, her she has like a groupie of like all of her friends that like she went to high school with that knew me when I was really young, and they're all like, what the fuck? They're like, who knew? Paul would become a woman at night. <laughs> People want more information on House of Grease, Glock, Hot Mess. Drag events, where can people go? Well, uh, perlacoddington.com is a thing now. <laughs> so it's that's my fun. website. Yes. It's all all of the me. girls and myself are on Instagram. You can put them down here. Great. Yeah, you we'll put get them the here. information for it. All here. You can email me directly. I can you need. hold my name almost. <laughs> can we just put it right here? Sorry, and then a penis. <laughs> and then I'm going to. Get the editor to put like, it like right picture. Yeah, you can email me directly. <laughs> okay. Um, being the manager, I kind of end up doing all of the communication stuff. Sam Brown, yyc at gmail.com. There we go. She's a woman. Who is she? <laughs> Pearl. Who?